Okay, this is one from B7. Um, I've given it the title Ecosystem Services, which I don't really like as a title. I think it's a very awkward kind of thing, but we'll, we'll try and uh, work our way around it. This is basically the idea that the um, your surroundings, the ecosystem, is providing things. Um, so, for example, the soil that you need your plants to grow from, um, clean water, which comes from rivers and rain. Um, the idea that the surroundings are actually responsible for a lot of... Um, things that we need but we wouldn't ever think necessarily putting a cost on them you don't think about how much things like clean water or soil cost because they're just already there so that's really what we're talking about a specific example um, from the books is talk about mexico city now they're probably not going to ask you about mexico city on an exam but they might ask you about somewhere else and ask you to apply the principle but we'll, we'll look at what uh, happened in mexico city it's a very large city um, very densely populated but they had a, a problem with deforestation not in the city itself, but in the uh, surrounding ecosystem and the, the hills and so on of surrounding it. Now, with deforestation, when they cut all these things down, what will happen is, um, if I try and draw a very simple one, here's my uh, kind of forests. And what vegetation and trees do is they have these extensive root systems. And if you've ever pulled a, a, a plant out uh, of the soil, you'll know that the soil kind of really gets in between these roots it really packs everything in together and what roots are doing is that they're, they're holding the soil together so if you get rid of um, these trees if you cut them down to make more space or for uh, timber or whatever it may be the soil will tend to get washed away now do be careful here soil being washed away is called erosion okay that is literally what erosion is it's when the smaller particles of rock and soil and things are washed away now why does this become a problem? Well, a couple of things really. Uh, when we start to lose the soil, and that soil will get washed into rivers and cause something called silting, which just basically means you get lots of mud and stuff in the rivers. Um, so instead of being, if I kind of draw a river in profile here, all this mud kind of and silt, fine particles, blocks up the river, and you don't get as much water flowing. So that can have an effect on um, your water supplies. You can also block up drains and all sorts of things as well. Um, what the, the plants will also do is um, all this kind of dead material in the soil will help to, to hold the water in there. So soil without much, um, without the roots and all this kind of um, decaying plant matter in there doesn't hold onto water as well. In fact, they use this term dead organic matter or D-O-N. If you're ever worried on an exam whether you can use an abbreviation or not, always write the full thing first of all, then you can abbreviate it. But dead organic matter in the, the soil holds the water in there. Of course, if there's no trees, less dead organic matter and less water. Our plants will also, of course, there'll be water evaporating off from them all the time. These will form clouds. And of course, clouds will provide rain. They'll also provide um, a bit of a cooling effect um, by, by keeping direct sunlight off. One of the reasons you know, deserts are very hot is they don't have many, much cloud cover. It makes them very hot in the day and very cold at night. So all of these things can build into, um, if you've got trees there, we have more water. Once the trees have gone, the soil will erode. We can't grow anymore. We get less water and rain because there's nothing to evaporate. We've got all these silting problems. Quick word then on soil itself over here and um, what is soil it's basically just a, a mixture of I'm going to exaggerate the size here uh, bits of rock and dead organic material bits of plants really that have um, fallen off or broken off there's our dead organic material oh, really. uh, and that's all soil is you can actually make your own if you wanted not it's the most exciting thing but you could get grains of sand uh, bits of gravel and things and you could put dead plant material in there and that's basically all soil is um, it's very important that um, soil in order to remain fertile, here's a good word, in other words good for growing crops, what you need is plenty of air in there. One of the best things for doing that is worms. And what worms will do, earthworms, is little earthworm, I guess you didn't know what an earthworm looked like. <laughs> there it is, little face. Um, they're very good at going through the, the soil and what they do is they, they make little tunnels through it and the air is able to pass through. If you don't have any earthworms in there, for, for example, if you've ploughed up your field, what ploughing can do is it can uh, kill the little earthworms off. And the soil will then tend to go quite compact. 
so we'll lose all these nice aerated spaces in between there's not as much oxygen in the soil anymore and that tends to be bad for plants so worms are actually quite important one of the ways that people are trying to get around this one of the techniques it's been done well fairly effectively actually um, they're using it in parts of India I think uh, it's something called seed drilling which is after you have let's imagine you've got a crop of plants here don't know what that is um, but you cut the plants off like that because you want to harvest whatever this is um, what you will then do is instead of digging this out and replowing the whole field you do something called seed drilling or direct drilling this is the book and you basically plant your new plant into the, the remains of that plant so you're not having to redo dig all the soil out and it's very effective in increasing the yield of your plants.